current position, I do not think, I do not think, um, because I, because studies have shown, experiments have shown that that doesn't work. Um, and we're only going to be digging a bigger hole for ourselves. What we really need to do is work with the steering system and the, and more on the weight transfer. That should be the bigger goal in the suspension and steering system for next year's car. Um, of course, with that said, the steering system and the suspension system need to be very closely, uh, you know, knit together. But to uh, the groups that we're uh, as a big group, we need to be very sure of what we're doing first. We can't have we can't have asses, um, and uh, we really can't go and try a little bit. Just like driving the car, when we're building the car and designing the car, we have to go ten times. Um, and yeah, that puts a lot of things on the line, but we have to do it. Lastly, uh, and finally, uh, and after this one, there's only small questions on the systems. Uh, but uh, what I'm going to do right now is compare the two suspension systems and describe to you what they're going to be. camera system, we, we, uh, we, we see it, uh, lateral weight transfer is a big thing. So we don't have to worry about controlling lateral weight transfer. Uh, with everyone else, they, their lateral weight transfer, they are trying to hone it down as much as possible, we're trying to limit it, we're trying to lower the CG as much as they can, but with us, we don't have to do that. We can raise the CG, which is which could be a good thing, or it could, it could just be an okay thing, okay? And this will increase our lateral weight transfer, but at the same time, it will reduce the, uh, the probability of us bottling out, which has happened a few times already. The other thing with raising the CG is that we can now package the car up instead of out, um, which one makes working on the car easier, and two, makes it so that we can potentially make a smaller chassis instead of having a chassis that spreads out. Um, those are those three things are what is limiting really the conventional suspension system. The lateral weight weight transfer has to be limited. The CG has to be as low as possible. The packaging has to be spread out. Even though it can be tightly knit, it has to be spread out. Now here's where we fall off uh, with our current suspension system, the camera system. Tires for a conventional system, there's such a large selection. Of tires and wheels, there, there is, there's, we can't get around that. And the fact of the matter is, at that bottom line, at the end of the day, if we go with a conventional system, even though it has no short balls and it's you know whatever, we will go faster. That is, we can't get around that. We will go faster if we go with a conventional suspension system because the tires make all the difference. Um, the other thing that the conventional suspension system allows us to do, and, it, and this is a big point, this is a big pro, is that there's been so much more research and it's such a large data uh, knowledge base on the suspension systems of this sort and many. There's just not, there's no way to get around that. There's, there's, there's books and papers out on this kind of, out on, on data and stuff like that. And With the camera system, we're shooting in the dark. We are literally shooting in the dark. There hasn't been much done. The, uh, the, cam the MX-1 car, yes, it is great. Yes, yes, Milton did a lot of work on it, but that's all we have. And our car is really not that much better. Our car, unless we, we want to do serious, serious experimentation, serious data acquisition, we really can't justify why we should be doing this unless we do get the numbers, because there are no numbers. Um, and like I said before, tires very limited. We don't have to. We don't have a great selection of tires, and it's very hard to get get a hold of. Even the PMTs that we have this year were extremely hard to get a hold of. So, really, 
yes, the camera system has a lot of problems. Yes, the camera system seems to do very well. But we need to get around those two big things. And it really depends on the team now. What you guys, what do you guys want to do? So with that said, I'm going to open it up to questions, discussion points, whatever, what have you. If you have more questions on the MS1, let me know. Um, something, oh, actually, before I open it up, something that, um, that I should say about the MS1 I forgot to say was that with the MX1, um, Milliken found that um, the camera thrust from the tires increased increases at a higher rate than the um, the load ratio before the saturation point of the tires. I don't know if they understand what that means. Uh, this is a basic curve of what what a tire is like if this is a camera angle. And this is a uh, normalized So basically, just um, the amount of force you get over the amount, uh, the amount of weight you put down on it. That is what, you, what you're getting. And it turns out that with with the MX1 car, because it likes weight transfer so much, that the amount of camera thrust you get out of the car actually increases at a faster rate than um, than this curve, right up to the saturation point. And the other thing with this that unlike conventional cars where you load up, uh, load up, uh, you have a lot of weight transfer and you decrease in the amount of grip, we have to increase and we increase faster, faster, faster. Um, the other thing is uh, with our ARV, um, unlike other cars, if we were to put on an ARV, it will actually stiffen up the car. Say if we if we if we put an ARV in the rear, uh, it stiffens up the rear and we'll get more grip in the rear, which means that it'll promote understeer. So we can it it's actually completely backwards from what you expect from a normal car. But there you go. Everything is kind of backwards in this car. Um, we do have 